Can you hear me? I can. Hey, wonderful. How's it going, Don? It's going great. How are you? Good, good. It is nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I've seen you several times, but we've never met. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, just waiting on uh, Chop Top, who should be here momentarily. He had to grab a, a quick bite to eat, and then uh, we'll get rocking and rolling. Wonderful. Thanks for wearing the Nunslaughter hat. Hey, well, I'm happy to. I've got a, a Nunslaughter sticker, too, right here. When the first time I saw oh, you yeah. guys, um, it was at uh, No Class, and it was with Lady Beast and wow. Deceased and Ringworm. Oh, yeah. Which was absolutely a fucking great show. Just so oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, King and I have, have talked about doing uh, several tours over many, many years. And for some reason, it just never, you know, can't, it, there's so many people involved, you know, all mm -hmm. the whole band, his whole band has to be free, my whole band. And we just haven't. But um, uh, I just saw King here. Um, but, uh, about a month ago with violence, right? Yes. Yeah. I was violence, there too. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I didn't make it to the show cause <clears throat> that was on a Wednesday and we practice on Wednesdays and then Thursday we were going, we were leaving for Peru in the morning. So I just, I showed up around three, three 30 and hung out with him for an hour or so. And then, uh, went to practice and, uh, but yeah, we, we talked, um, and his, his drummer Amos books tours. Uh, okay. So I said, got to do something next year. Yes. Okay. That so would be I think, I think would it'd be phenomenal. a really good bill. And in fact, my, yeah. my friend in Peru, um, the promoter that brought us to Peru, he brought last year, the year before, he brought Deceased. And uh, he knows that we're friends. And he said, would you be interested in coming back next year as a Nunslaughter Deceased package? And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. Yes. So, that would be hopefully. awesome. Yeah, I know because Kings, uh, they got their new uh, recording, their new album. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, I know they're going to have the big 40th anniversary tour next year. Uh, King's been kind of tight-lipped about it, but he just said, we got something big in the works. I'm like, that's fantastic, you know, looking forward to uh, to that. Um, but yeah, Nunslaughter Deceased would be good. Uh, you know, throw in like Assault or Ringworm or... Uh, you know a couple of other cleveland <laughs> bands but that would be that would be phenomenal you know yeah are you are you are you around cleveland or are you based uh, about in... a half hour yeah i'm in oh, know, okay so yeah probably have to bleep that out for my rabid two fans who might want to find out where i'm at <laughs> yeah so it's like you know I, I love coming to see you guys like in westlake it's like a 20 minute drive you know it, it's just so quick and and easy you know um yeah so yeah and then chop he's on he's more far west he's he's more like in the sandusky area so we're all all Ohio, Northern Ohio. Uh, are Are you originally from Ohio or Cleveland? Yeah, area? yeah. No, I, I I grew up in Vermilion, um, mm -hmm. and then I I moved to Lorraine, wow. and now I'm in Sheffield, and uh, so stay. I I love the area, you know. I I love the lake, and and you know you don't get a lot of the opportunities you do in other other places, but you know I'm happy. My family's my friends here, you know. So I I just like the place. Hey Mark, yeah, do you I'm uh, originally from, you from Pittsburgh, but um, I've lived in in Cleveland off and on for 22 years. It's like you're and, uh, home now. I, yeah, pretty much. I, I've, I've lived in Cleveland the longest out of any city, including Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. So um, I really, I think it's a great city, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it is. And I, you know, people can make fun of it. And uh, I think, well, then, then don't move here because I don't want to, there's never traffic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things are still pretty cheap, you know, when you yeah. go out and, you know, so I'm like. And it's rebuilding, you know, it's becoming here. a dynamic city all over again, you know. Yeah. Sorry for the uh, technical issues there, Don. No, I trust me. I know computers can be frustrating. I did yeah. IT for 14 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe you can help Chop I worked for, solve his problems. For <laughs> I worked for Key Bank. I was a senior network administrator for a while. And then I worked at. Uh, it, it, for NASA over in Brook Park, um, oh, okay. doing uh, uh, I worked on a couple different contracts doing PC refresh and da data migration for NASA. Oh, nice. I'm sorry, Don. I'm going to try to uh, I'm going to try to come back in refresh it. Okay. My aunt used to work at the uh, the NASA as well. Way back in the I want to say early '80s, uh -huh. she she worked with um, like she was worked with key the punch cards you know she did stuff like that with data cards data networking or you know data input and uh so it was kind of a 
Yeah, it's just great. The city's My mom great. was a uh, was a, a key punch card operator um, back in the eighties as well, early eighties, like eighty one, eighty two. And I remember bringing the cards home, you know, and saying, mm -hmm. "This is what I do." I basically I punch holes in cards. Yeah, know, yeah, for the data. And I was thinking, like, ah, this computer shit's never going to take off, <laughs> right? You know, as a kid, right? Yeah, yeah, no I, vision whatsoever. Yeah, I, I remember, um, you know, taking some computer science classes in high school. You know, we learned like basic and then Pascal. Uh, you know, and then I, I got a, my first computer was a Commodore sixty four, which mm -hmm. you know, it's a it's a great game computer for games, and I was able to do. I took it through college, even into grad school. I was able to like do all my papers and stuff, but the memory because it was only you know sixty four k. I could you know a longer papers it would like have a break in the middle because there was only so much room for the word processor to hold. There was this giant gap. My teachers were like, what are you doing? You know, I'm like, I don't, I have a Commodore. I, you know, and he goes, well, you should get a new computer. I'm like, I can't afford 1200 bucks. I'm like, you know, I'm a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a poor grad student. What I'm eating fucking ramen noodles. You know, what do you want from me? <laughs> My game on Commodore 64 was uh spies demise. That was oh, my yeah. favorite game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I I, I loved the Commodore. My friends would uh, get together on the weekends, and we'd swap discs, and we'd burn them. You know, trade copies of games, and and uh, you know, I loved Seven Cities, Seven Cities of Gold. You know, all the, the Oh, I don't games. remember that one. That was um, he also did. It was a Sid Meier game. He also did like the the, the submarine simulation, the World War Two simulation. Seven Cities of Gold was like the golden age of exploration. So, the the computer would actually you could use uh, America, but you were coming over from from Europe to explore the new world. So you met natives, you you could get, you know, trade goods for gold or whatever, and you could piss them off and they'd want to kill you, you know. But it was all about exploring and stuff like that. It was it was kind of a pretty in-depth game for its time. It was pretty cool. Can you uh, hear and see me now? Unfortunately, we there can you see are. you. Yes, there you are. Uh, I can't see you guys. I had to reverse my phone around. I have no idea what's going on. Well, you, the, you oh. look as you look as bad as normal, so you're you're all fine. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot of work to get this mug together. Tell you. <laughs> yeah, well, it's yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, uh, Don, before we uh, really get into things, how much time do we have of yours? I don't want to take up all your night if you got if you got things going on. Um, half an hour, forty minutes. Is that cool? Yeah, forty I mean, minutes. Yeah, yeah, we can do great, that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That'll that'll be great. So we'll. Uh, well, I, I've got a lot of questions. We will get to the good stuff. We'll get to it. So that'd be cool. So, <laughs> All right. We're going to do our amazing intro, and then we're going to get right to it. How's that? Sounds good. All right. This is John Mako from Fifth Angel, and you are watching Heavy Metal Horror. Stay tuned. I am Montag, Master of Illusion. What goes up must go down, but not always. Hey, this is Chop Top, and this one's going to be a slaughter. <laughs> and you are watching and listening to a heavy, heavy metal, metal horror. <laughs> oh, kitties. Tonight, we've got a very special guest. We are doing our part of our celebration of the Cleveland underground metal scene. We've got Don of the Dead from Nunslaughter. Don, welcome to Heavy Metal Horror, man. Greetings, my friends. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's so cool to have you uh, on the show. It's, it's great. Uh, I've seen Nunslaughter three times. Uh, I just I just love the band. It's so, so much fun. I actually chopped eye, Chop and I went to see uh, you guys. It was at the uh, midnight uh, 20th anniversary Mm -hmm. ballroom yeah the, at the ballroom so so that was his first time seeing nun slaughter first time seeing midnight i'm like you know it's just a great oh, wow. kind of music so you know <laughs> yeah but um we're gonna we're gonna get right into it so we'll we'll skip the kind of generic questions and and, and uh we're gonna get right into some some good stuff how would you describe the cleveland metal scene I, I tell you that that's one of the we were talking just a little bit earlier about how great of a city Cleveland is, and uh, I think the the Cleveland metal scene is thriving, and there's a lot of bands that aren't doing the same thing. Um, uh, they have diverse styles of of metal music that's happening here in Cleveland, and um, 
So obviously also not to forget about the, the punk scene here in uh, in Cleveland, but as far as like independent bands go, Cleveland's the city, man. There sometimes there's there's nights you can go to two, three, sometimes four shows in one night. You know, if they're if they're scheduled properly and catch a bunch of different bands, it's what a great scene. Yeah, a lot of great intimate venues, you know, where mm -hmm. you can get up and close and personal. And yeah. uh, that's what one thing I I love about it. So um now, Nunslaughter's been touring uh, on and off the road lately, and I know you got some more shows coming up. So, I, talk. Let's talk a little bit about the touring. How have the shows been going for you? Uh, show's been uh, really good. We we did finish a tour in February with uh, Pro Fanatica on kind of the East Coast. We were up in Canada, down to Florida, and back. Um, and then uh, we don't really have anything else set up here in the United States yet. I'm working on maybe a tour in, down through Texas towards the end of the year um, with uh, Morbosadad and uh, the Black Mariah, which we toured with them last year um, in December with uh, Possessed, and we went out to the West Coast. Um, so we just got back from uh, Milwaukee Metal Fest yesterday. Um, we, we performed on Friday, and then we basically, one of the guys in the band had to be back in town for an event so we we drove all night and got back um and that that show went it went really well i mean uh i hope they're the attendance is uh better than he was expecting um you know i'd like to see it continue but mm -hmm. who knows there was there's so much going on in the weeks beforehand and the weeks after uh these fests are competing for the uh the same amount of folks so we'll see if he can keep it going. But um, yeah. And then uh, the other thing we got, uh, we got a show in, in October in Chicago uh, with Sodom and Dismember. And then, um, and then we're heading to the next day after that show on a Friday, we're heading to Mexico on Saturday to do a, a fest down there. And I think it's like maybe behemoth, I think is the headliner on that one. Um, yeah. That's, that's excellent. Excellent. Like, you yeah, know, Oh, go ahead, Chap. Well, I was going to ask Don one of the questions. You guys put on such a high intensity, high energy show. And how do you prep yourself, you know, before you take the stage? And because some of the uh, the the facial expressions and stuff as you're sitting going through everything, you know, in the songs, it's just like it has to take quite a lot of energy, maybe just to get pumped up for that. How do you usually prepare before you take the stage? Oh, for. Uh... Thank you. First of all, um, uh, yeah, we uh, well, uh, there's a lot of, uh, especially at my age, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stretching going on before I go out on stage, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, psyching ourselves up and and uh, talking about basically, you know, um, how the show is going to go. You know, make sure that you do this when I'm doing this, this kind of thing. Um, but yeah, everyone back there, even uh, especially Joe, our drummer, he's back there. He's doing all sorts of yoga moves and shit. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we all kind of um, we all kind of just uh, like five minutes beforehand. We kind of all just sitting there thinking about what kind of show we're going to do. And then when it's like, let's go, guys, everybody's all right. And they just that, they turn that switch on and we go out there and bring the hell, you know. Nice. Oh yeah, nice devil, devil metal. Uh, <laughs> what's your favorite food to eat on the road? We always love to find out. What the favorite food that that I found is uh, pizza, but the most consistent food to find is tacos. Um, pretty much, no one can fuck up a taco. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people can fuck up pizza, but yeah. um, we we went to uh, 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 was it uh, New Haven, Connecticut. And uh, that guy that does that uh, Barstool Pizza Reviews, One Bites, um, he said this was like one of the best pizzas ever had in the world. So we went by. It was uh, called Sally a Pizza. And uh, it is probably the best pizza I've ever, ever had in my life. Nice. So uh, like we went there on tour one time. And then like a couple months later, we were kind of near it. And uh, everybody, it was the consensus of the band, like, yeah, we've got easily an extra hour. Let's go get some pizza. <laughs> so we went and got, but so pizza is my favorite, but the most consistent is tacos. Nice, nice. Um, how do you take care of your voice when you're on tour? Well, 
I just, and I know people have mentioned it to me before, but um, I never use the, uh, there's like a, um, there's a T. Uh, I can't remember what it's called right now, but when I was on tour with Pro Fanatica, the singer Pro Paul from Pro Fanatica was like, "Hey, you should. You, do you use this tea?" And I said, "No, I, I've never never used that before." And he's like, "Oh, you got it. You got to use it." And uh, so I went and bought a box of it, and I used it on the whole tour, and I, my voice never felt strained. Um, in fact, after that was three weeks of touring. After the third week. Um, my voice was never stronger, uh, it, you know, before. And I was like, I could do another three weeks, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go. But yeah, um, it's one of those things that, uh, I used to pretty much blow my voice out after one or two shows and then just suffer. But then once I started using this tea, um, yeah. Plus I think just getting older, I can, um, I'm better at, uh, judging how far I can push my voice before it, it, you know, I damage it. So, uh, but yeah, T. All right, <laughs> cool. Um, okay. I next... wish it was something cool, like lots of cocaine and vodka, <laughs> you know, but it's T. <laughs> that's great. Hey, you know, that's what we love asking so many questions and different mm -hmm. things because we just never know what we're going to hear. And that, that's all good, man. It's all good. Um, I'm going to skip into some hypothetical situations. All right. We, we try not to ask too many of the boring standard questions. We'd like to have a background, but we like to do some more interactive things. So we're going to do some things that are a little more interactive uh, here. So here's some hypothetical situations, Don. I want you to create a super group, not including anyone you perform with. Which three or four musicians, past or present, would you want to play with? Oh, boy. Uh, probably uh, Neil Peart from uh, Rush. Um, I'd absolutely like to see and hear uh, Porthon from, from Bathory. Uh, and uh, guitar probably got to be Jimi hendrix <laughs> you know oh, nice like yeah, that, like that's... to like to see what he can come up with uh in modern day you know uh but those for me I, I'm, I'm a big fan of all three of those musicians uh, i just think it'd be fun it'd be great i can't yeah. imagine what like Porthon and jimmy would do together <laughs> yeah and then having peer <laughs> be behind the kit yeah right uh, yeah peer peer i grew up listening to to rush dress is my favorite band and that's how i learned i taught myself how to play drums by listening wow. to rush and uh not that i could get it 100 percent, but you know uh, but but hearing those little tiny things that he does um yeah the, he's the professor for a reason but uh yeah that's that's my my true i'm still still aching inside a, a light is dimmed in the universe um okay uh if you could be any superhero for 24 hours who would you be and what would you do with your day of power? Well, that's a that's a tough one there. Um, I mean, I guess the first thing that comes to mind would be a Superman. You get to you get to fly around the world, um, lift just about anything that you want, and you don't have to take shit from anybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I mean, super. Uh, there's there's other superheroes out there that have cool um abilities but i mean come on it's superman yeah if you got so. it for a day man <laughs> right right i get it i get it okay an alien shows up and asks you to represent metal in three songs what would those three songs be and why i have to say something along the lines of uh probably curse of the pharaohs because of uh the guitar work um uh sodom in the sign of evil blasphemer that would be on there uh and that has to do with uh the absolute uh simplicity and how raw it was recorded and um i have to say maybe holy diver because deal rules and uh i'd want them to hear that I mean, it's the deal. It's, it's I know, right? You know, yeah. What can more you say? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right, we're gonna be changing gears over to horror. We are heavy metal horror, after all. Um, so, what are some of your favorite horror movies? So, uh, I mean, mainly the 
60s, 70s, and, and early 80s stuff. Um, big fan of uh, Hammer Horror. Anything yeah. with uh, uh, Christopher Lee, you know, or, or uh, Vincent Price. Um, I also did, especially as a young kid, was very interested in Universal Monsters, uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon and Frankenstein, the mummy, the werewolf, mm -hmm. all the standard practice, you know, ones. Um, and then when I got a, a little older, but but still probably too young to watch uh, the, uh, you know, kind of um, the the B movies with the, a lot of the the TNA, the Russ Meyer type of, uh, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, sexploitation type of, of yeah. movies. Um, right. But it's Chop Top's recent, life. That's his yeah, every Friday yeah. night. Yeah. So but as of, as of recent right. times, it's a it's a hit or miss. I know, you know, there's like a uh, guy really enjoyed the Blair Witch. That's not really recent. Mm. What is that? Probably 25, maybe 30 years ago. I think it yeah. came out. Yeah, um, 99, I think. But uh, and and of course uh, uh, the Saw movies again not really super recent. Mm -hmm. um, but the most of the modern movies they're they're hit or miss for me. I'm not I'm not as much into gore anymore as I was when I was a kid. I'm more into mm -hmm. the uh, the the spine tingling, the uh, sus suspense, and and uh, scary out of your seat. Mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't have to have a lot of blood and, right. and guts. Um, I mean. The Expendables, there was a lot of violence in that. <laughs> right. you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not really a yeah. horror movie, but it's that fun. was great. Yeah, really fun. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's that's uh, mainly I'm watching sci-fi adventure anymore. Mm. Uh, okay. Not as much horror. Nice, nice. Um, so these are going to be some one-offs. This could be uh, uh, questions about anything. No. Um, what would you tell your childhood self about being a professional musician? Well, two things. I think it would be uh, don't do it, <laughs> <laughs> and if you and if you do do it, um, do it uh, with more um, zeal than than I did. Um, I I tried to walk that that fence between uh, a fine young uh, young upstanding citizen and uh, a, a person that wanted to perform and be in a metal band uh, for the rest of his life, and I. I I danced on it a little too much and uh I should have gone all the way over right away when I was a young kid took guitar lessons piano lessons drum lessons you know learned more about uh music instead of such I was just more of a uh, a, a listener and uh that's what I would tell my young self nice nice um who are some of your favorite writers or some of your favorite books? Um, some of the uh, Beatnik stuff uh, that's, uh, you know, Kerouac. Um, uh, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't really been reading that much anymore. Um, I do like uh, listening to books on um on uh, the streaming or uh, you know get the discs from the library and that would be uh like uh asimov you know hg wells type of stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but uh not not many horror writers uh, uh that i've my my all-time favorite book was by uh, uh mccameron it's called swan song oh yeah it's great great book oh, yeah. and it's very much like stephen king the stand mm -hmm. uh, you know but yeah end of the world kind of thing yeah yeah and so anything to do with dystopian uh futures um i always enjoyed in fact i'm really looking forward to seeing kingdom of the planet of the apes uh oh, maybe this too. week yeah uh, just because i remember as a kid i didn't know what those movies were i didn't realize that was a genre of of movies or books about you know mankind's collapse and then you know the people trying to live in the sewers and in the yeah. filth and, and post-apocalyptic you know. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, um, uh, you know, when, um, Terminator, uh, finally came out, I think that's when I finally heard that word or that term like dystopian. And I'm like, those are the movies I like. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so that's, uh, yeah. So early on, especially in college, I read, uh, more like, 
Bukowski, you know, mm-hmm. Beatnik, uh, that that era of uh, of uh, writers, but then more recently, sci-fi has uh, uh, been what I've been listening to or reading. Yeah. Yeah, nothing better than those sci-fi classics, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still remember getting the books like uh, Frankenstein and and uh, the Jules Verne collection when I was a kid. You know, War of the Worlds, and you know, oh, just, yeah. just reading these and wow. just devouring them. You know, so yeah, they're classics for a reason. You know, um, go ahead, sorry, Chuck. I was going to say, uh, Don, I'm going to switch gears a little bit here. We love road stories. So, is there one road story that you can tell us you're comfortable with that is uh, Real funny road story that you know. The more outlandish, the better. We love hearing the more, the yeah, the more outlandish, the better. Is there something that you could uh give us on that? A road story that you finally remember? Hmm. Boy, I tell you, there's 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 a lot, but I most of it I don't want to share. <laughs> um that's fine. We understand. I don't know anyone in the bus. So, let me think on that. I'll, 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 I'll mull that over. We'll, we'll come I back around to it. I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. Right. No, <laughs> so. we get it. We get it. We, we've heard a, a variety of of, of, of uh, stories, you know. Hilarious. Uh, and, and, yeah, so that's fine. But we also understand, you know, you got working relationships. So no yeah. problem well, actually, there. Actually, one, one comes to mind. It's funny now, but it, it certainly wasn't funny for for Jim when it happened. Um, so this is a Jim Kanye uh, story. We were in uh, we we're in Italy and we we went to Venice and he uh, he was focused on getting these uh, I think it was masks or puppets or something from Venice for his I think his mom or maybe it was even just for him and so when we got off the the the, the uh, van out of the van. I knew I didn't want to go anywhere with Jim because he he doesn't he was Jim. So I went the other way, you know. I went this way, he went that way, and um, apparently he crossed the bridge, went to the first store there, found his masks or puppets or whatever he he wanted. They don't speak English, but Jim's trying to explain to them that he he wants to pay for them. But they need to pack them all up and FedEx them to his house back in in uh, Parma, and so he did. And me and the, a couple of other people, we walked all around Venice, and we you know we're having we're having you know, cappuccinos and pizza and gelato, and we're seeing this and we're seeing that, and it, it was like a fantastic because we were, it was like we only had like an hour hour and a half, so we were hustling, you know. Anyway, we get back um, to the. Uh, to the uh the van and the one guy that was with him was bitching about how you know you stuck me with jim he he went to one store and when i didn't see any of venice we're like hey man I, like i knew i knew what was gonna happen so flash forward we get done with the tour jim gets home and he was talking about like he's like i spent 175 bucks to ship all this shit you like so he gets back home and all the fucking masks were crushed like they didn't pack them properly. Oh, <laughs> like, dude, you wasted your fucking time in, in Venice buying these stupid fucking masks. In, in the end, they all got crushed. Oh, so that's shit. one of the stories. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Venice. Yeah, yeah exactly. that sucks, man. That sucks. Oh. Uh the last one off question. Um, before we get into some games here. Um, which non music celebrity would you most like to have a drink with? Hmm. probably robin williams yeah yeah because he makes me laugh all the time you know? yeah yeah and it was yeah. sad that how, how his his brain degenerated and mm-hmm. you know uh but yeah yeah the it's it's strange that you you mentioned i just saw a a, a a like an instagram story somebody posted something with robin williams so he was he was in the forefront of my mind, but yeah, what a great comedian, and he seemed like such a a, a sweet individual. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, and I've heard great stories about the guy too. Uh, but yeah, it'd be Robin. All right, all right. 
Um, we've got a game called Blast Beats that we're going to play here. I know our time is limited. we got down about 10 more minutes, so we're going to get through these. Blast Beats, I'm just going to ask you a question. It's usually a simple short answer or or, or multiple choice, and we're just going to do it as quickly as possible. All right. Favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. PC or Apple? PC. Favorite streaming service? YouTube. Favorite cartoon character? Bugs Bunny. Favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, oh, boy, that's tough. Probably like uh, Rocky Road. All right. Dog or cat? Cat. Justice League or the Avengers? Justice League. Star Trek or Star Wars? Ooh, Star Wars. Bigfoot or Loch Ness Monster? Bigfoot. Dracula or Frankenstein? Dracula. How do you like your steak cooked? Medium rare. Favorite sport? Football, I guess. Yeah, I'm not a sports guy, but football. All right. Favorite movie snack? Popcorn. Your favorite board game? Monopoly. Spielberg or Tarantino? Spielberg. The best concert you ever ever attended? Ever attended. Probably my first concert, which was Ozzy, Motley Crue, and Wasted. Wow. That's a good bill. <laughs> All right. And the last one, your favorite line or scene from This is Spinal Tap. <laughs> uh, boy, there's actually there's quite a few. Uh, I'm probably, uh, 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 this one goes up to 11. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> nice. Uh, this game is called The Hot Seat. I'm going to uh, name a band, and I want you to tell me your favorite album by that band. Uh, it's called Hot Seat because sometimes people get squirmy, like, oh, I don't know this band, or they, you know. But uh, so here we go. Um, Black Sabbath. Master Alley. Judas Priest. Um, British Steel. Motorhead. Uh, Iron Fist. Dio. Holy Dyer. Rush. I'll pass. Okay. Uh, Opeth. I don't really know the band. There's a, there's a, the only album I think I kind of know is something water, water, Black water park, or Blackwater Black park. Water park. I've listened to that in the van, but I don't know them at all. Okay. King diamond. Abigail. Iron Maiden. Number of the Beast. Testament. They had a legacy album? Legacy? Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah. Anthrax. Fistful of Metal. Megadeth. Uh, probably Killing is My Business. Okay. Slayer. I'm a rain and blood kind of guy. Nice. Kiss. Sounds. <laughs> Jeez. Uh. So I, I like, I'll say double platinum because it's got a lot okay. of great hits on it. Okay. And then the last one, non-slaughter. <laughs> Boy, I'll, I'll go with uh, Hell's and Holy Fire because I'm very proud of that record. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, this last game we're going to be playing is called Name That Festival. Nunslaughter is playing a festival with two other artists. I'm going to spin the wheel of mystery to find these other two artists or bands Then I'd like you to name the festival that you're all playing at. So let me pull this up here. I'm going to share my screen. All right, where are we at? Share the screen. There we go. Okay, Don, can you see the wheel of mystery? I can. All right, I'm going to spin the first one. Ooh, who could it be? Who is it? Oh, oh, it looks like, oh, oh, I think it's the Jackson Cher? 5. Oh, excellent. Jackson That's better 5. than Cher. <laughs> All right. The Jackson 5. Who else? Ooh. Who could it be? Uh oh, maybe Taylor Swift. Oh, 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 it's Wham. Okay, so we got Wham and the Jackson Five. 
and Nunslaughter are all playing a show together, uh, a, a, a festival. Best. What is the name of that festival? That festival would have to be... Uh... What's, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> nice. Nice. The devil made Dude. him do it. <laughs> no. I saw Zappa on that wheel. I was I had my fingers crossed for Zappa. Yeah, I tried to find a wide variety, you know. Now, yeah, now Nunslaughter just, need, Nun just needs to cover a Jackson 5 song in her style, you know. That'd be great. Yeah, we'll get Bill It'll McClintock to do or something. it. Yeah, we'll get Bill McClintock <laughs> to do it. You know, that'd be great. <laughs> to do a, a mashup. Um, yeah. We got just a few more questions. Um, we we're all fans of other artists, Don. Who, what is your favorite piece of memorabilia? You know um, that that you have, maybe you know something signed, a poster, t shirt, concert ticket, something that you that you treasure. Uh, oddly enough, I have a I have a set list that uh, handwritten by uh, Jim Kanye, and uh, that's one of the things that. Uh, I prize, and it wasn't by design. It happened to be stuck in a in a, a a bucket underneath a bunch of shit, and I didn't find it until quite a few years after he passed. And I thought that's pretty awesome. That yeah. is awesome. Very cool. Cool, cool. Um, besides music, what kinds of hobbies or interests do you have out, outside of music? Mainly, I just ride my motorcycle. Uh, I like taking motorcycle trips. Not only from cleveland and you know go wherever but uh me and a buddy of mine we have uh in the past couple of years we fly to different places and then just rent a motorcycle so uh last year last year i think i think it was last year i went to romania this year i'm supposed to go to vietnam um and just riding as many places in the world as i can nice nice That's excellent cool. Um, we had talked briefly about the the plans for non-slaughter for 2024 and and also po the possibility of, of touring but um when uh, will you be back in the Cleveland area boy you know uh, we haven't made any plans for uh, uh another Cleveland show I think we played we played once this year at no class and we played at the end of last year like December and February. I guess we are due to, to play a show. Um, normally, and it, maybe we'll even organize something in October uh, because we've got, or September, October, because we're we're supposed to be doing a tour. Maybe we can do our first show here and then, you know, lead from here. Uh, but yeah, nothing nothing planned in, in Cleveland. And uh, ho hopefully we'll get something maybe before the end of the year. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice to see you again. You know, actually come up to you in person and and yeah. say hi this time. But yeah, you always put on such a great show. Um, D Don, I want to thank you for your time you spent with us. Um, and if I could ask one last thing of you, is that could you mind doing a, a bumper for us? Like this is Don of the Dead with Don Slaughter, and you're watching heavy metal horror, something like that. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. Do Do you need like a pause and then? Uh, what I'll let you take it. Whatever you want to do it. All right. Greetings, minions of the sinister. It is I, Dawn of the Dead, and you are listening to heavy metal horror. Fantastic! Thank you, thank you, thank you, Don. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Welcome. We're we're, we're gonna thank we're you. gonna do our outro. We're gonna wrap up, and we're gonna invite you to bring up the horns with us. So, hey, you can find heavy metal horror on unsaneradio.com. Listen to full episodes or download to your device. You can find us on Facebook, Heavy Metal Horror Podcast. On Instagram, look for Montag Lewis. One word, our YouTube page, Heavy Metal Horror Podcast. If you're watching, that's where you're at. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you know someone who'd like our show, tell them about us. This has been Montag, Master of Illusion. Cop top. And Don the Dead. And Don you've been dead. watching... Bring up the horns, Don. <laughs> Heavy metal, metal horror. This is Doug Helbring, and you have been listening to Heavy Metal Horror, the best podcast that you've never heard before. <laughs>